Welcome to Nova's Here. My name is Greg Horn. Do you ever feel alone? I mean, I know a lot of people that are single either by choice or divorced or widowed. And yes, uh, and maybe they live alone, so physically they're alone. Yet I also know people that are in marriages that are, even though they're not physically alone, they're actually emotionally and maybe even mentally alone. And, you know, recently uh, I did a wedding up in uh, Owenton, Kentucky, and uh, I always use this scripture. Uh, I say always, probably 90% of the time uh, when I do a, a wedding, and it's from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And it says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other one can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one person be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer anything. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And that's from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. But as I was driving home that wedding, it was about an hour ride home back to Lexington that night. I just, I don't know, I started thinking about that. And um, as a single person because of divorce myself, and uh, I just started thinking, you know, what about for those of us that are single, either by choice or through divorce, uh, unexpected divorce like me, or a widow, loss of a spouse to death? Um, what about for us? Uh, you know, how can a person, if you're alone and, you know, a triple braided cord, and I started kind of talking to God about it. And I just is sitting there and I'm not saying it was an audible voice, but I felt like the Lord said to me, well, there is, you, you do have a, a triple braided cord. Everybody does married or single, but especially for single folks like yourself, Greg, and it's father, son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And I just started smiling, thinking about, wow, that is so true. And, of course, you know, in the Bible, I mean, I know the majority of people who listen to this program are followers of Jesus. Yet, I know sometimes people just scroll the radio and come up on this program, and I'm so glad that you did. But in the Bible, in the Old Testament, of course, it talks about God. But then it predicted near the end of the Old Testament that Jesus was coming, the Messiah. And then, of course, Jesus started in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels. Then when Jesus left to go be with God, his heavenly Father, our heavenly Father, he said, I'm leaving someone for you, a comforter, the Holy Spirit. And so the Trinity is the Father, which is God, the Son, which is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And as a follower of Jesus, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's one of the beautiful things about being baptized. Whenever I am fortunate enough to baptize somebody, I baptize them in the name of the Father, which is God, the Son, Jesus, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us and give us wisdom and comfort us and be with us. And if you're a follower of Jesus, maybe some of you accepted Jesus a long time ago, many, many moons ago. <laughs> okay, I know we have people off from large age range that listen from teenagers to, uh, I've got a listener that's uh, almost 90. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you're not alone. If you're a follower of Jesus, maybe you forgot about that gift of the Holy Spirit, you can be comforted today, encouraged today that you are not alone. And the great news is if you're in the single, you're you're barely in the minority. Did you know in the United States, 45.2% of people are single? 45.2%. That means if you're standing in line at Kroger, there's a person in front of you and then a person behind you waiting to check out also. One of those two people is probably going to be single either by choice, by divorce, or widow. 
And so I don't think we've done a good job as the church, and I've been pastor at uh, some different churches and part beyond staff. And, you know, and I hear this a lot of times from my single friends that, you know, the church really doesn't reach out to singles or make singles feel welcome. And part of it I understand. I think being healthy is being around people that are older, younger, married, single, divorced, uh, you know, widows. Uh, I really think the body of Christ needs to be a mixture of all of that. And yet, I understand if you're single like me and you feel like, you know, they do marriage series, but nobody ever talks to singles. And so part of this program is to remind those who are married, because I know a lot of people that are in marriages that they're miserable. And they're in a challenging season of marriage right now. And even though they're not physically alone, um, they are emotionally, mentally lonely, as I talked about earlier. And I want to encourage you that Jesus is with you because of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, Jesus talked about this in Acts chapter 5, verses 1 or 4 through 9, when he said, um, he was telling the disciples, I mean, can you imagine if you're the disciples? And you've done life with Jesus for three years, and then all of a sudden, Jesus says, "Hey guys, um, got to tell you something. Um, I'm going to be leaving." And just like when I told you before that, you know, I was baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So then, the the disciples who were Jesus, they kept asking, "Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom?" Of course, see, they thought when the Messiah was coming, which talked about in the Old Testament was predicted that that's what he was coming for, and they wouldn't be under Roman authority anymore, and, you know, we'd be free, and yet that's not what Jesus came for. And I got a feeling today that maybe there's somebody listening that's saying, you know, I've been expecting just like the disciples were expecting Jesus to do something, which in this case was to free Israel and restore their kingdom, that maybe you have these expectations of Jesus to restore some kingdom that you have in your mind. And, you know, uh, sometimes that's really painful. It's disappointing. And yet I love and I remember my hero, Wayne Smith, at Southland Christian Church quoting this verse a lot, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. And it says, For my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts higher than your ways. And I have to admit, that verse has really helped me a lot over the last 20 years. As like everybody, I've had some great mountaintop experiences but experiences in my life, been really blessed in many, many ways. But I've also had some really deep, deep valleys, and some that even kind of maybe seemed hopeless. And yet, that verse, remember hearing that back when I was in college, and the only thing I probably did it was God honoring back then was show up on Sunday mornings and put some money uh, in the offering plate. As I worked a job during college, assistant manager at a grocery store. Some of you may remember the Food Town grocery chain. Unfortunately, uh, they're not around anymore, but... But the fact of the matter is God was still working my heart and Wayne Smith would share that verse and a lot of times he would share it after having to share about a gut-wrenching story of someone having to bury their child or uh, somebody talking about l losing a spouse unexpectedly in a car wreck or because of alcoholism, addiction or things. And yet he would just say, all I know is that the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 that my ways are not your ways declares the Lord, as high as the heavens are, my ways and my thoughts are higher than your ways. And friends, this side of heaven, a lot of times we're not going to understand. A lot of people listening thought, man, I never dreamed I'd be alone at this season in my life. People that are widowed, um, so many friends of mine's uh, parents, including my own mother, you know, they're, they're widows. And, you know, man, it's just tough. It's a new season of life. And yet, I've mentioned a few times over the past couple of years that I've been uh, doing this program. Not It's not quite two years yet. It's about uh, 20, 20 months. I'm sorry, 22 months. But, you know, she is really pressed in the Lord. Her faith in God's become real, and she admits she gets lonely sometimes and um, becomes a little tearful. But then she just starts saying, you know, Lord, thank you for 50-plus years of marriage with 
Ed, and I know he's with you, and he wouldn't trade places, and thank you that you are my comforter. And maybe if you some today, some of you today listening, whether it's not because you're a widow, maybe it's because of an unexpected divorce, or maybe it's because you had to divorce somebody because they were very verbally abusive or they struggled with addiction. And I know people that listen to this program that they can relate to what I'm saying. And it's okay just to cry out to Lord and say, you know, Lord, this is not what I expected. I did not expect to be alone, but you, just like you promised the disciples that you weren't leaving them alone that you were going to leave a comforter, a counselor. A, Lord, I need you to do that in my life today. And in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17, Jesus told the disciples, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. And, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, a good example is with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Trinity, like with water. You can have it, obviously, a liquid form. You can have it ice. You can have it, you know, it can be a mist. And those three forms, they're all a form of water. And uh, I heard uh, Pastor Steve Idle, a good friend of mine, used to be pastor at Northeast Christian Church in Louisville, he said one of the ways that helps him understand it is when you look at a pretzel. He's kind of like me, likes to eat, even though Steve's lost a tremendous amount of weight. Looks great, man. He's lost over 50 pounds in the past two years and looks great. But he said, you know, I think of the Holy Spirit uh, and the, the Trinity and God and Jesus like a pretzel. You know how you see those different parts in the <laughs> inside of a pretzel, and but yet, you know, they're all held together, obviously, by you know, the outside there, and it's just a great visual. I'd never thought about that. I heard him give a sermon on the Holy Spirit one time, and he talked about that. But I just want to encourage you that when you're afraid of being alone, that maybe you need to read these verses in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 9, and in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17. And yet maybe, you know, you think, well, Greg, I really don't, since the Holy Spirit in my life, and tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about about that, what causes us to maybe not sense the Holy Spirit's presence in our life, and so I hope that you'll tune in tomorrow and join us again as we're going to continue this conversation, uh, or discussion, should I say, it's not a conversation about you are not alone. Also, I uh, want to remind you that you can always catch us if you tuned in late or like I like to hear the rest of this, uh, the first part of this program, you can always go to our website, Hope is here dot today. That's hope is here dot today. All these 14 minute programs are on there. Uh, we've been blessed um, to have over 24,000 uh, podcasts downloaded in the 22 months of doing this program. And also, if maybe you want to share it to somebody, you're like, oh, I need to share this with somebody I know that feels really alone right now. Maybe it's gotten discouraged. You can share those. I also want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook at Hope Is Here or Twitter at Hope Is Here Lex or uh, on Podbean and iTunes. Subscribe to us at Hope Is Here and uh, they'll automatically email you uh, each program that we do. So tune in tomorrow. My name is Greg Horn and this is Hope Is Here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com.